There are many kingdoms that you can create or play as in Seagate 3. There are so many in fact, I was too lazy to count them all. There are some well known great ones like Egypt, France, Germany, and Persia. But there are some that are forgotten. Some due to being underrated, and some due just to being garbage. Today, I'll go into my list of the top 5 worst kingdoms in CK3. This video is based on a few factors. Supply limit, conquering opportunities, and land within a kingdom being a few. 867 is going to be the start date that I look at, as it's the only one I play like 95% of the time. I've also made the decision to exclude the kingdoms of both Cyprus and Crete, as I see them being primarily useful as stepping stone kingdoms. An example of this being is that the Kingdom of Africa is already created, and it's your de jure kingdom that you should be in. You can just conquer Crete and at least hold on to a kingdom title while you wait to conquer the Kingdom of Africa. Anyways, let's start off the list with... For our first one, we go into India, to the Kingdom of Gondwana. Located in the upper middle region of India, it's in a great area to conquer high development land. The land that's actually in the kingdom though, is below average. This means that you're going to have to put a lot of work into this kingdom. If you count all baronies, there are 17 in the entire kingdom, which is definitely below average for all kingdoms. The provinces are mostly jungle and plains. Plains is one of the better trains, with jungle being one of the worst, so it's definitely a mixed bag in the land department. Overall, if you had a chance to form this kingdom, or literally any of the other ones that border you, I would honestly question you pretty hard if you chose Gondwana. If there are two things you should know about me, the first thing is that I hate having intrigue characters, and the second thing is that I absolutely hate playing in Tibet. You may ask, why choose Giel wrong? I guess is how you say that, over all the other Tibetan kingdoms. Well, to start, it's going to be the hardest to leave Tibet if you start in a spot where you need to form this kingdom. It's also the furthest away from potential high development conquering opportunities. It does have 40 potential baronies, but but there's really not a point in having mountain barony holdings if you can already build baronies. There is also a minor possibility of the Mongols coming to destroy your fun. It is pretty minor in my opinion, probably about 30% chance, but it is definitely something to stress about. There's not much to say about the Kingdom of Bashkiria. In 867, every one of its provinces has an astonishing zero development, with most of the provinces being terrible steppe lands. It's also conveniently placed in the middle of nowhere, meaning you won't really have anywhere desirable to conquer for the first few hours of playing. Norse invasions are likely to happen if you try to push east, and it's also likely that there's going to be one stronger power to the east that would just love the idea of destroying your kingdom. If that wasn't bad enough, you're basically guaranteed to be obliterated by the Mongols, meaning that you have something fun to look forward to once you finally get the ball rolling. Not a great kingdom to have an 867 by any means. Now we go from the portion of the list that was unfortunate, to actually being torture. The Kingdom of Anivia is part of what I like to call the two weird Saharan kingdoms, just due to their borders being absolutely disgusting. The development in all its provinces seems to be an average of around 3, so it beats Bashkiria in that department, but otherwise, I think it's worse due to a lack of easy round building. Morocco, the Rustamids, and Ghana are all going to be able to easily destroy you, so what you're forced to do is going to worse land and hope that you eventually conquer enough garbage land to rival one of your neighbors. Your neighbors will also love to take chunks out of your kingdom that you so desperately try to make strong. You won't have to worry about the Mongols though, so that's good. The kingdom of Tuva greets us at the end of this list by being a tiny kingdom situated in possibly the least fun place to conquer, Mongolia. No development, all garbage land, only 8 counties, there isn't really anything going good for this kingdom. I don't even know if it's possible to defend yourself from the Mongols holding on to this kingdom. You are literally right on their doorstep. <laughs> if I had to choose, I'd just willingly submit to them just so I wouldn't lose everything that I worked on. Your biggest downside could actually be your biggest strength though, as you could form the Mongol Empire yourself and forge your history. But unless you take that one linear choice, you're basically guaranteed to suffer and to fail. Anyways, there's my top 5 list. Do you think my choices are wrong? Just let me know in the comments. I'm sure your guys' personal rankings vary quite a bit from mine. Just let me know, and thank you for watching.